Well, hi guys, Elias here from the Rocky Mountain Life Channel. Still out here today with Ferret Face and my nephew Daniel on the Talaria Sting e-bike. But now I'm out in front and we're still on this fairly mild trail here. But it's given me the opportunity to kind of ride it a little bit harder here. And as Ferret Face put it, play around a little bit. <laughs> And these things have got lots of torque and I'm running at about half power according to him and I don't feel the need for any more I mean this is this is pretty quick so if you're concerned about the fun factor on one of these <laughs> the fun factor is pretty good And because it's so darn light, it's just so easy to maneuver. And you're not going to be able to hear the acceleration because <laughs> there's virtually no noise. But boy, it's actually quite peppy, even on the power mode that I've got it on, which is Eco 9. Suspension is not up to snuff with my Beta. I think if somebody was willing to invest in some suspension upgrades on it, I don't think it would be that bad. Uh, there's no rear fender on this thing though, so every little puddle gets my rear end wet. And I'm wearing jeans, so when you wear jeans and you get them wet, they stay wet forever. It takes a long time to dry out. Oh boy, it's quick. Very snappy. Fairface is talking about working on a new throttle uh, thing for it to see if we can smooth out the power because it's pretty, it's pretty aggressive hit for this one. Suspension is a bit on the soft side, but not too bad. But it's just so easy to maneuver. Now one thing I will say that I've noticed about these e-bikes, this particular one anyway, the Talari Sting, is the uh, ground clearance is lower than what I'm used to. So I've bonked the side of the trail a few times with the foot peg on one side or the other, which I don't usually do on my Beta. I won't say it's bad, it's just lower than what I'm used to seat heights lower I mean this is a much more approachable type of trail bike than what most traditional motorcycles are this is even shorter and lighter and easier to work with and maneuver than a beta cross train or two-stroke which only weighs something like 218 219 pounds stock this is like 150 160 the rake is fairly steep on this But it's not difficult to ride. It's actually quite approachable. But I am aware that the foot pegs are closer to the ground than what I'm accustomed to with my 500. It is easier to go faster than what I normally do though because it is so light <laughs> and it's fun there's no doubt about that which is the whole reason why we do this anyway right just to have fun and it's fun Daniel's doing really good. I think he's gone down two times, maybe three. Not bad at all for a first timer on a trail. So guys, final thoughts on the Talaria Sting. As outfitted with the 21 inch front tire and the 18 inch rear tire, 
um, which is a, a sort of an upgrade aftermarket thing. And the bigger battery pack, which gives you more power and more range. Um, they've upgraded the handlebars to uh, give it more of an actual dirt bike feel. Um, it's smaller. It's not a, a large machine. But it's very approachable. It's very easy to ride, actually. Um, for a beginner dirt biker or for maybe a female rider or somebody who's not very tall, this would be a great place to start. Um, and people talk about range. That's always been my concern. That's one of the biggest, well, that and the cost of an e-car, electric car, is range and the cost. The cost on these is comparable to a regular bike. I think this bike here, I think Aaron told me, is somewhere in the vicinity of $9,500, $9,800 set up the way this one is, which is a lot of money um, for something that doesn't have as beefy a suspension as a regular dirt bike and things. But this one's also highly upgraded. But if you're going to be somebody that's going to do 20, 25 miles of trail riding um, and not really go much past that, I think it could be a really great choice in a lot of ways. Be really good for a beginner or perhaps a female rider that wants to get into trail riding like this because um, it's not heavy, it's not very fatiguing. Um, I'm having a grand old time. You don't have to worry about shifting gears or feathering a clutch or any of that kind of stuff. It's throttle control and brakes. That's pretty much it. Find the mode that you want to be in. And then of course, be mindful of your range. Now, I have ridden trail 717 out by Divide the entirety, it's about 36 miles. I've done it a couple times at full length. And it's a trail much like this one. It's got some harder parts than this, but it's a 50 inch ATV trail. And I have ridden it from end to end more than once and done a you know, 37 mile day. I'm pretty tired after that. That's, that's about all I feel like doing in a day. So this bike should do close to that. Maybe not quite that far, Aaron's estimating with this battery pack and riding it not super aggressive like I do. Probably could get 35 miles out of it. I don't know if I would trust it to go quite that far without testing it. You know, if you actually bought one of these. But, I mean, a 35 mile day on trails, to me, is a fairly long day in the saddle. And consider you're doing 12 miles an hour for a lot of it. So, to me now, the range on this one, the way this one's set up anyway, with the upgraded battery, is less of a concern. Now, the battery upgrade is $2,800 all by itself. That's the biggest problem with e-cars as well. If your battery pack dies, you're 30 grand into a new battery pack, which feels like buying a whole other car when you're not. So, yeah, you're going to put some money into it to get it set up. But if you're really looking for something that is lightweight and easy to maneuver, easy to sit on, I mean, not only can I put both feet flat down, I can stand up and have five inches between my butt and the seat because <laughs> it's not a tall machine. It's not big. Um, so if you're, you know, if you've got a girlfriend or a spouse or sister or daughter that is wanting to get into trail riding and has moved out of that mini bike stage and is ready for something a little bit more full size, but you can't put them on a great big 250 or something like that. And you don't want something that weighs, you know, 250, 300 pounds. This could be a very good option for somebody in that situation. So again, if you guys wanted to uh, test one out, um, AM Moto Toys has not only this Talaria Sting, but they've also got the Rar Mantis, which according to Aaron is better, <laughs> more of a dirt bike. Um, I've been really enjoying this one. This one's been a lot of fun. However, there is no rear fender to speak of. It's that. So every time I go through water, the, my butt and back gets wet. <laughs> my backpack's probably super muddy. But uh, yeah, I mean, don't write these things off completely just because it's an e-bike. And I, I'm interested in having one, but not because I'm trying to save the environment. Because uh, I do like how quiet it is. It's not harsh on the ears. And it is light and it is easy to maneuver and it's easy to ride. And it's fun. It's snappy. It's got good throttle response. Yeah, see, look at Daniel just cruising down through that trench at a pretty good clip. Good for him. He's figuring it out. We might make a addict out of him yet. 
But anyways, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, sort of first impressions video of the Talaria Sting electric dirt bike. This one's upgraded, so I don't know what the stock one feels like. But if you're willing to put in the cost to upgrade one of these and still end up with a 150 pound dirt bike that makes no noise, <laughs> um, you're in a good spot with this. So thanks for coming along, guys. As always, I appreciate it, and I will see you next time.